welcome back class to our course mechanical behavior of materials so in the last class we started discussing about uh, solid solution strengthening uh, we discussed about type of uh, solid solution and then we were discussing about uh, also um, the distortion in the lattice due to the presence of solute atoms okay so if you see uh, this is the last topic uh, we finished talking about so this is the perfect lattice okay so there is no distortion here okay now if we add interstitial atom so this is the case of interstitial atom so interstitial solid solution okay so this is your interstitial atom here so you can see you have added an extra atom which is a black atom here okay i can clearly see we discussed about this also the last class you can clearly see strain right distortion in the lattice here so there is a distortion in the lattice okay and this distortion is non spherical in nature because the voids are either tetrahedral or octahedral voids and interstitial atoms are going to be sitting there okay now the bottom two are for substitutional solid solution so both are for substitutional solid solution okay so in the first stage here so red is red is the substitutional atom so you can see in the interstitial atom we have added an extra atom which is a black color in the substitutional case we are not adding any extra atom right so the number of atoms remain same as in the first stage so if i say this is the first stage so the number of atoms remain same okay only thing is that we have substituted a red atom Uh, sorry blue atom with red atom and in the uh, first case here this one the size of the substitutional atom is smaller than in the second one okay so this is the smaller atom and this is larger one okay second one and in both the cases you can again see a very nice distortion okay so here and see a distortion and here also we can see a dis distortion okay so i wanted to show you again with a nice schematic in the last class i uh, drew using my hand okay so in both the cases whether it is interstitial or substitutional you are going to see lattice distortion and these distortion are going to interact with the dislocation right you already know that dislocation also have strangely associated with it right so even when you have s dislocation half plane you have a stress right on the top uh, uh, above the half plane and bottom of the half plane you have compressive and tensile region right so you have a stress field associated with dislocation and now you also have a stress field associated with these solute atoms right around the solute atoms so now there will be interaction between both the stress field dislocation stress field and the stress field associated with the presence of solute atoms and that's how there will be increment in the stress the okay, strength of the alloy that is the whole concept okay so let's understand this so the stress field around solute atoms interact with the stress field around 
the dislocation. Okay, so both the stress fields, they are going to interact and this will lead to increase in the strength. Okay, and why? Because there will be restriction in the movement of dislocation. Due to restriction in the dislocation motion. Okay, that is point number one. Now the next is, there are few factors which will play role here, okay? The, the factors are number one, size of the solute atoms. So more the size difference, So higher the size difference between the solute atoms and the solvent atoms, you are going to see more strengthening, okay? So more the size difference, higher is the hardening or say strengthening, okay? That is point number one. Now the second factor is elastic modulus. of solute. So higher the elastic modulus, okay, higher is the strengthening effect. Okay, so these are the two factors. One is the size of the solute atom. So higher the size of the solute atoms as compared to the solvent atom, there will be uh, more strength, right? Increment in the strength. And second is the elastic modulus. More the difference, more is the strength, okay? Now there is uh, another point that uh, increasing the solute concentration, So if you have more and more concentration of solute, you are going to increase the effect of strengthening, right? So increase in the strength or say magnitude of strengthening. Okay. But remember one thing, the, you know, you cannot just continuously increase the solid concentration in, in the solvent because there is a solubility limit of uh, any solute in the solvent, right? Otherwise, then you will see set formation of second phase. Okay. Now, let, let us understand uh, how the strength is going to vary with respect to size and concentration. Now we know that if we increase the size as well as concentration of the solute, then you're going to see more uh, effect of strengthening, right? So I have some quantitative uh, plot here. So effect of size and con concentration. Okay, so strengthening scales with two factors. One is the size difference between solute atom and the solvent atom. 
and second one is the concentration of the solute. Okay, and the plot here is for the addition of the solute atoms in proper. Okay, so you are adding aluminum in proper, nickel in proper, and so on, right? Tin, beryllium, silicon, etc. And then you have a quantification of increment in strength. strength. So the y axis here is sigma y yield stress. And the S axis is the solute concentration in atomic percent. And uh, it is the solvent here is solvent is copper. Okay. So you are trying to dissolve all these solute atoms, different type of solute atoms in copper. Okay. So the first observation, if you look into this plot, one can make is increase in the solute concentration. You are going to see an increment and we are assuming that a linear relation exists. So a rela linear relation can be assumed. Okay. Now the second difference what you see here, uh, let me change the color. Okay. So if you see proper, the radius is 1.28 angstrom and then in the bracket i have listed the radius of other solute atoms okay so you can see larger the difference between the radius of proper and the solute atom higher the magnitude of the yield stress okay so the tin which is 1.51 and proper uh, is 1.28 that is the largest difference you can see Right, so you can see at each solute concentration, when we add tin atom in the proper matrix, you have the highest yield strength, isn't it? Okay, so that is the second criteria that higher the size difference, you have more strength. Okay, so see here, uh, one point three one and one point two five, both are very near to each uh, to proper. Right, so the increment in strength is much lower. Now, another point here is that for the same size, difference, the smaller atom gives a greater strengthening effect. Okay, so suppose you have uh, two different atoms. One is on the positive side and uh, another one is the negative side, but both has the same difference, approximately same difference with respect to the solvent atom, right? So the smaller atom is going to give you more strengthening compared to the larger size atom. That is the another point. So you have size difference and concentration of the solute uh, playing in, in a solid solution strengthening, okay? So we have understood the concept of distortion in the lattice because of the presence of solute atoms. Now let's talk about distortion in the lattice because of the presence of dislocations. And then we'll discuss about how these two distortions, they are going to interact leading to the increment in the strength, okay? So we'll now discuss about distortion in the lattice due to dislocations. Okay. So this one have been discussed by Professor Sashan Shekhar. So we'll move slightly faster. Okay. So we have two type of dislocations in general edge dislocation and screw dislocation. 
So edge dislocation. Okay. So when we have edge dislocation, the stress field around edge dislocation we can write as sigma xs, sigma yy, sigma zz. Then we have these two components, and then rest are zero. Okay. So this means that you have both shear and tensile compressive stress field. That is point number one, okay? So if you see the stress matrix associated with edge dislocation, so it has both shear as well as tensile or say compressive components. So components of hydrostatic, right? That is point number one. Now, since you have both the component, you are going to have both dilational and distortional component. Okay. So you are going to have both dilational as well as distortional. Now let's talk about screw dislocations. So if I write down matrix associated with screw dislocation, it's going to be zero, 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 sigma zx, sigma zy, this component will be zero. And then you have Hz and Yz, okay? So you don't have any hydrostatic component here. You have only shear component, okay? So point number one, only shear stress field. Okay, that means no component of hydrostatic. Okay, that is point number one. Second, since you don't have any component of hydrostatic, you're not going to have dilational component here. You are going to have only distortional component. So only distortional. Okay, so when you have presence of dislocations, right, edge or screw, both are going to be associated with stress field around it. In edge, you are going to have both components, dilational as well as distortional, whereas in screw, you are going to have only distortional component. Okay, now we have understood the stress field in both huh? dislocations as well as solute atoms, right? Now let's try to correlate both of them and understand the increment in the strength. Okay. So let me write down what we have studied. So if I have substitutional atoms, then you are going to have spherical. Let me change the color. So you have spherical huh? distortion. And if you have interstitial, atoms, then you have non-spherical. distortion okay both are stress field so stress field okay this is 
number one. Now, if I talk about dislocation, so when we have edge dislocation, so both dilational and distortional field okay and when we have screw dislocation then distortional field so we have studied this so this is the summary okay so now let's see how they interact so let me make a table so i have let's say edge then screw And then on this side, I have substitutional. And then interstitial. Okay, so now interstitial has non spherical distortion field. So it is going to interact with both edge dislocation and screw dislocation. Okay, uh, sorry, so interstitial and substitutional. It has only spherical distortional field, so it is going to interact with only edge dislocation. It is not going to interact with screw dislocation. Okay, because it doesn't have any shear component. Screw dislocation. Uh, sorry, uh, sub, uh, screw dislocation has only shear component. So substitutional atom is going to interact only with the edge dislocation, where the interstitial atom can interact with both edge as well as screw dislocation. And this is one of the reason why interstitial atoms, solute atoms will give you a higher hardening effect as compared to substitutional atom. Okay, because Interstitial solute atoms can interact with both edge and screw dislocation. Okay. So overall, if you see interstitial solute atoms gives give a higher hardening effect. as compared to substitutional atoms. Okay, and we are talking about per unit concentration. Okay. Okay, so interstitial atoms are going to interact with both. Okay, so uh, one more, let me write down one more summary here. So if I have solute atoms, interstitial and then substitutional, then you know you can have a effect of this much in terms of increment in strength as compared to substitutional atom okay and this is relative strengthening effect per unit concentration
you need concentration. Okay. So overall, we have now studied uh, the effect of uh, both solute atoms, interstitial and substitutional solute atoms on the strengthening effect. And now we know that the interstitial solute atom will provide more strengthening as compared to substitutional solute atoms. Okay. So if I qualitatively draw, you know, delta sigma on the y axis and percentage alloying element on the x axis and let me draw and these are qualities so what i am doing i am trying to show you the effect of different alloying elements in steel Okay, so this is for say carbon and nitrogen, and then we have silicon somewhere here, then manganese, okay, then moly, and then say nickel. Okay, so you can see here that when I add carbon and nitrogen, the increment is very, very high as compared to other alloying element. Okay, So per unit concentration, if you see, the interstitial atom is going to give you more strengthening effect. Okay, So this is in iron, addition of alloying elements. Okay, so in the next class, what we are going to discuss is um, something called uh, um, uh, yield point phenomena. Okay, so uh, I'm going to show you the plots of uh, mild, uh, medium carbon steel in annealed condition, where you are going to see the stress strain behavior is completely different than what you have studied till now. Okay, good, good. okay. Thank you.